Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to create our socket client, actually WebSocket client for our Android application. So let's start with creating a file called socket client. Uh, this class is going to be injectable and it will have a JSON object inside the constructor, not there. So let's create this JSON object as a module. So I'll create an object called app module. I'll annotate it as module and I'll create two functions here. The first one is provide context and it will have the application context and as a context and it will return to context. And the next one is uh, provide JSON which will be a type of JSON and simply return a new JSON object. So this one will be, you know, singleton through our whole application. We do not have to create it over and over again. And if you check now, we will see that we have a reference inside our socket client. So let's go back to our socket client and we will have a listener for our web socket. So let's call it socket events listener. This listener will have three functions. First one is on new message, which will have a message of type message model that I'll create in a second. And the next one is on socket opened. And the next one is on socket closed. So let's create that uh, message model object. Actually, I'll just copy and paste it here. We're going to need the socket events as well. So I'll copy and paste the socket events. You will see we actually these are the signal types that we are going to store inside this variable as a message. So these are the same as the signals that we had on the WebSocket servers variable. Pretty straightforward. Let's go back to our uh, socket clients and close all of this. So I'm going to need socket event listener of type socket event listener and it's going to be null initially so i'll create a set listener for it and then i'll have a message listener of type socket listener and inside the body i'll simply just set the listener that is going to be derived from the function to this one and for the unstop function which we will have inside this class we simply want to just set this listener to null okay so that's how we you know set up our listener and then we want to have a web socket object of type web socket clients it's going to be null initially and then down below i'll have a function called init socket and it's going to instantiate my you know web socket object which is going to be an anonymous class, WebSockets client, and then I'll pass the URI of my local machine at the moment, like this, and then implement the member of uh, the WebSocket client. So whenever it opens, I'll check if my socket listener is not null, then I'll call the onSocket opens. And whenever a new message is coming, I'll try to use, you know, run catching and use the socket event listener and give the unknown message. And then using JSON from JSON object, I'll pass the message and message model as the class of it. So simply just uh, not this one, this one. Simply, you know, just convert the string to my message model and pass it to the listener and, you know, notify the higher level classes that are using this socket client and whenever i'll receive the on close i want to you know simply just socket events listener and on close and below that i'll wanna connect my web socket simple as that and inside the on stop i want to run catching run catching this one and simply close blocking a close the web socket like this and i'll have one more function called send message 
to socket it's going to receive a message object of type message model and it's going to send the message model using json.convertit to json to our websocket client and then inside the init block i want to add small delay so using scope.launch and I add a delay small delay like one second and then init our socket because sometimes when you inject your websocket client when we annotate it as you know a module and ejectable and call it singleton sometimes this object is getting you know created before the application class and call the callback of the socket is opened and whenever we see these uh, events we will start to you know sign the new user to the server using this username and because this username is not being created yet then uh, we'll get an issue so we will set a delay to make sure that hey this class is being created first and then you can start your circuit process so right now we want to create an event sender class called socket event sender and this is going to be injectable and we'll have a constructor that will receive the socket client object we will have the username reference using my application dot username so we'll have some functions like store user and the body is going to be socket client dot send message to socket and simply pass the message model and the type is going to be store user I want to import this class so my code would be smaller and the name is going to be username the next function is create room and we get the room the next function is create room and we will get the room name as the input so all we do using socket client and send message we pass a message model to it type is going to be create room and the data is going to be room name you will send the room name as a data and the name is going to be username the next function is going to be join room we get the room name again we simply you know write a function like this the next one is leave room function we get the room name and using socket client we send the signal of leave room and the data of the room name and username as the username the next one is leave all rooms so all we get is you know just send the signal of leave all rooms with the username next to it the next one is start call we'll have a target of type string inside here we will use the socket client send message to socket give it a message model the type is going to be start call the name is going to be username and the target is going to be target that we have up here so that's pretty much it for our uh, socket event sender so these classes you know responsible to send the signals to the server that hey i want to create a room join a room leave a room or start a call inside the room so that's it for this video on the next video we'll start to creating our service our foreground service for our application and start working with our you know socket client and stuff like that till the next video see you everyone thanks for watching